Hey everyone, welcome to another webinar on this uh, beautiful day here in Boston, 95 degrees, but cool inside right here. So, uh, and I know out in uh, Colorado, another another hot one uh, with, with David over here at Kick Further. So, so really happy you're joining us today. We're gonna be talking, it's, it's August now, we're getting back to school, which means we gotta think about the holidays. We're already creeping up on it. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about launching products during the holiday season and kind of everything that takes to really make that a success. Because it's, it's, you know, in, in some ways, very similar to how you would launch a product at any time in the year, but in other ways, it gets that much more complex just because of all the extra factors that go along with the holidays. So we're gonna be talking through some of that today, uh, both kind of from a data perspective and also from a more uh, strategic planning perspective. Uh, and, and really happy uh, to be joined today by David Koichman from Kick Further. Uh, and just an introduction myself, I'm Andrew Weber, I'm the Director of Insights over here at Take a Metrics. Uh, and just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. This webinar is being recorded, so everyone here uh, will receive a full recording of this session roughly 24 hours at, uh, following the end. Uh, so sometime early after early afternoon tomorrow. Additionally, you also get the slide deck, so you can kind of go along at your own pace. And finally, kind of for any questions, you know, we're going to be doing Q and A at the end. You don't have to wait until the very end of the webinar to kind of ask your questions. If at any time throughout the presentation question comes up, feel free to use that question box on the bottom or side of your screen, just depending on what client you're using, and ask the questions there. We'll get to as many as we can at the end of the presentation. Uh, so. With that, I think we can go ahead and get started. We're a little past the top of the hour now. Uh, so first off, uh, just an agenda about what we're gonna cover today. So first thing we're gonna be talking through is kind of really important aspects of launching products during the holidays when it comes to marketplace sellers and brands, right? If you're selling on Amazon, Walmart, et cetera, really some key considerations there. Uh, and then getting to, okay, given all that kind of table setting, what are kind of those roadblocks that you might face and how do you kind of plan for them and maybe you know, try to avoid those best you can, especially ones that are kind of unique to this year or this upcoming year, given what we're seeing. And then, you know, I'm gonna pass it over to David, who's gonna be talking through, okay, given all these factors, one, you know, uh, thing that you might need is some additional capital. So what, is that process like how how and when should you bring that in uh, to really support that product launch and then finally i'm going to wrap up with a couple of real world examples of brands that launched products during the holiday season and did so successfully and they're going to harken back to a lot of the strategic and tactics that we talked through early in the presentation but it kind of brings it home in a more real world context so awesome Thanks, thanks for having me, Andrew. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing about uh, the Tikametrics side of things and chiming in with what Kick Further does for, for our customers as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm super psyched. I mean, Kick Further, I think you guys are doing some some great stuff, and this is a really exciting space. So, so super happy to have you on the line, and uh, really, it's got some great content here from you guys. So, so pumped for that. So, a quick note uh, before we get started uh, about both us and then and then Kick Further. I'll pass it over to David, but. If you're not familiar with Takeometrics, we're a technology platform. What we do is we pair that SaaS product with a team of expert analysts, and we help you scale across online marketplaces. Really specifically right now, we're focused on Amazon and Walmart. And it's really, you know, again, focused real on advertising and making that as making your advertising program as great as possible. So that's including intelligence on top of that, uh, you know, better automated campaign control some really great stuff to just help you scale, even if you have a smaller team, and whether you're using us for extra hands on keyboard help or doing so yourself, you can tend to see some of the brands we work with here, uh, but we've been doing this for, for a long, long time, uh, and uh, you know, at any point, obviously, like you know, after the presentation, you'll get some information if you wanna you know, check more out uh, about what we do. Uh, but with that, let me kick it over to uh, Kick Further, I guess is the case may be about a little bit you guys. So yeah, we're we're uh, serving a lot of the same type of clients. We work with um, e-com clients that are selling on Amazon and Shopify and all all those other platforms, as well as um, some businesses that are selling through wholesale and retail channels. But basically, you know, everybody that we serve is either manufacturing or purchasing a physical good and then selling it. Um, and you know. At, 
as many of you who are listening probably experience, one of the biggest costs in this space is producing the new inventory. And that puts a real constraint on growth, especially for an early stage, high growth business that's accelerating and you know trying to introduce new products and trying to run ads and maybe landing some new wholesale clients. All, all of that leads to amazing opportunities, which is a lot more sales. But in order to sell the product, you first have to create the product. Um, and that's exactly what Kick Further does is we facilitate the cost of production. Um, and so we, we structure customized deals for all of our customers so that they can pay their suppliers when they need to uh, issue those payments. And so that the inventory is produced, it's uh, shipped over to the U.S. without delays um, and available in time for launch or in time for the holiday season. And, and right now is really our busiest time of the year as all of our customers gear up to make those big purchases for the holiday season. Um, awesome. Andrew, I, I've got a lot more to say, but that's probably a good start. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, so uh, first let's go through these really uh, you know, important considerations for you as your business when you think about launching products during the holidays, kind of from a high level, and we'll kind of go down from there. So first, a couple hard truths about launching products you know, across marketplaces during this kind of you know, peak Q4, as it were. There's that limited time frame of peak, right? Everyone knows that. But what that means is that the impact of any supplier or fulfillment delays are magnified. And I mean, I'm sure, David, you know, you've run into this, that it's the, the idea that, you know, rather than, okay, if the product gets delayed a month or two, you know, okay, you'll make it work, right? That's a big, big problem when you're dealing with this time period. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you miss, you know, the big push, then if you're stocked out and people come to your Amazon page and they can't buy, they're just going to the competitor page, right? So you have to be sure to be proactive in particular in this environment right now. You know, we're talking to a lot of customers that are experiencing delays and preparing for those delays. So, you know, when they normally would place orders as late as September, it's it's time to be like, have those orders in already now. Um, you know, it, it really depends on where you're manufacturing and, and if there's shortages and, and delays of port and delays with logistics and all that. Also, it can impact costs. So you really have to understand, like, has have your costs of logistics gone up and how does that impact your margins and your ability to spend on advertising and packaging and all that other good stuff that you want to spend on? And can you get any discounts anywhere if you order more products now with your supplier and your order quantities? can potentially lead to lower costs per unit. So maybe you want to place bigger orders and, and, and less frequent orders than placing orders as frequently as you're used to placing them and then having to deal with those logistics issues more frequently. So there's, there's a lot of things that are going now that make this environment hypersensitive to anticipation and being proactive. There's some great points there, yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, building off that point, on the advertising front, what we're seeing, and this this maybe extends to, to fulfillment as well, and really sub supplier relationships, is that many of your competitors are going to be hitting the gas around the same time. That drives up advertising costs. But to David's point, right to your point, I mean, it's that you're also maybe in co competition when you're talking to suppliers with all these other with all these other folks that are kind of thinking the same way you are. That I need to you know get this moving. I'm going to get earlier. So it really behooves you to be uh, really understand that's what you're up against. You're up against other folks, both on the advertising front, that are going to be uh, against you, they're going to raise costs, and then maybe from the supplier side, right, that you're you're also going to be dealing with with other folks trying to really get their orders in, get get those uh, you know supplier relationships ironclad, uh, and that 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 poses some issues as well. You know, to your you know to a larger point, right, promotions, which I think is a lot of a lot of sellers really look to you know push those out. Obviously, during the holiday season, they know price promotions work. Um, a lot of folks right take the same tack it means that standing out with that deal is more difficult you have to really be cognizant of when is that deal how is that deal going to show up how are you know browsers on the site whether it's amazon or walmart going to see this deal um and really be focused on that it's not just as much as like okay we'll put a promotion out and we're good whether it's just a coupon etc like how are you going to make that more visible how are you going to really pr uh, promote that other than just having that deal to make it shine and make it compelling vis-a-vis uh, -vis, you know other competitors who may be doing something similar and this is something we'll get into uh within this section pretty heavily but when you launch a product 
and this is whenever you want to launch a product, but especially during the holidays, it's really unlikely it's going to rank organically on really key terms right off the bat. Especially if you don't have any review, you know, barely any reviews in the can because it is a new product. This puts you, this kind of puts you to disadvantage, and it really uh, is necessitates advertising because you're not going to show up in those places you kind of need to to drive real sales volume. Where you're talking the most, uh, you know, the highest volume searches, those are tend to be category searches, not branded searches. And guess what? Those those searches are, are always popular. You have products that are on there with long sales histories. That's how Amazon kind of places things. And if you're not writing organically on page one, especially on these category searches, you're at a really, really big disadvantage. You're not going to really drive a lot of sales volume. So kind of bring this home, putting some data behind it. It's really hard to generate volume if you're not winning search. So this looks at both branded and category terms. Now, again, category terms on a percentage basis vastly outnumber branded terms when you talk about the most popular terms on Amazon, as an example. So what this, what this shows here is the percentage of total organic conversions captured by just the top three results. And this is across the top 100,000 terms on Amazon. We split this by category and branded. And again, the branded terms are much more, uh, much, much less, uh, there's a lower number of them within this top, uh, this top segment. And they're mostly related to kind of category leaders, right? Brands that people know that they're going to search for immediately and they're going to come at high volume. You have these category terms, though, let's say like brown shoes, right? Where any, it's much easier to rank, theoretically easier to rank as, as, as a more upstart brand, but you have all these long sales histories. And guess what? In things like, uh, you know, Toys and Games, as an example, more than 30% of all organic conversions are captured by just the, uh, just the top three results. And this scales up to even, you know, over 40% for things like health and household. So it really shows that if you're not ranking at the top of the page, especially on page one, you're really putting yourself at a disadvantage from your product launch perspective to drive volume because these uh, top terms tend to be category terms and you're, but it's going to be really hard to rank there. Now on the plus side, because you have so much activity coming to these sites during the holidays, if you're able to capture that strategically, right, through advertising, through, you know, creative campaign structures, that can be a boon to the entire life of the product on marketplaces. As I talked about before, right, a product ranks, let's say on page one, top of page one, for these really high volume category searches because they built up that sales history. Amazon shows, hey, when people uh, search for this term and they click on this product, they tend to convert, we're going to rank that product higher. And so if you're able to do that at scale during the holidays, that has a huge impact down the line because you've shown that now on a much higher uh, scale. You know, you, you know, you can see volume go up by you know dozens of percentage points across a given category, sometimes even more. Uh, that can help the life of the product four or five months from after that. So really important you focus on that. And wow, so it's like it's like a concentrated uh, push, and you can you can get so much done in in a very short period of time for your reputation and and the accessibility of your product on on, on the different platforms. Cool. Yeah, this is this is right. super interesting for me to share with our customers too. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's it's again? It's one of these things where you have to just be focused on like this is the really good part is you know if you launch and you do so successfully during the holidays, it's probably the best time to launch it from that perspective because you get the most eyeballs on it, you get the most conversions, and that will help you months from there just to that conversion history. Amazon really puts that uh, front and center in terms of their 89 algorithm. And also on the plus side, keyword activity, it changes a lot during the holidays versus let's say month to month during the rest of the year. This really creates an opportunity for you as a seller to get Kind of blow past your competitors if you're really uh, agile, you can jump in early, you can kind of find these pockets of activity where you're finding people are really like converting, got conversion rates on a given term, let's say an automatic campaign, you're moving that one to manual once you see that level of conversion. And if you're able to do that before your competitors, you may be able to hop on a trend that's occurring naturally within cons the consumer base, but that hasn't been capitalized yet uh, to its full extent by let's say your competitor. So, it really rewards you as a seller if you're very active here uh, to just take advantage of these trends versus another time of the year where those changes tend to be a little slower to develop. Uh, and, you know, getting, David, to your point, when you have fast, reliable fulfillment, that gives you an edge. Uh, and particularly kind of during that stretch before Christmas, because guess what? If you're shopping the last minute, 
what do you focus on? You focus on, can I get it here in time to wrap the gift and give it to this, the, my loved one? You're not, you know, you're maybe not as cognizant about, um, you know, the exact brand. And if you see something where it's like, well, that was a product I was hoping for, but I can't get here for two, three weeks, right? I'm, I'm looking somewhere else. Yeah, for us, fulfillment's a pretty important aspect as well. You know, we, when, when we're helping fund a business, it's for us to evaluate eligibility and, you know, what, what, a, li what a business's limit would be um, is, is uh, part, part of that is fulfillment and how, not only how they produce the product, but how they get it to their customers. And um, it's just, it's an element of risk for us, which means it's also an element of risk and success for the customer. And, and for our earlier stage businesses, um, we can sometimes actually require businesses to work with a fulfillment center rather than pickpacking and shipping out of their own office, just because those fulfillment centers, they have experience and they're really good at keeping track of where things are going, how things are organized, making sure that returns come back effectively, that customers are happy with the, the way they receive the product. And also like they can actually be much cheaper because they have those quantity discounts with uh, all the different companies out there that ship and they know the routes and, and they have different facilities set up in different areas in the country so that you can get product to your customers really fast. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, building on the, the idea that you want to act sooner rather than later, you know, everyone is dealing with the fact that vis-a-vis -vis last holiday season, especially really two years ago, right? FBA has changed your ability to take advantage of it has been likely constricted. And so you're gonna have a lot of sellers looking towards these third party fulfillment options. So getting on this early so you can kind of, get, you know, work out those relationships, get your products in there and set and ready, uh, get that plan set is, is really imperative now because they're, they're gonna be dealing with really an influx of more and more sellers looking to them. So uh, worthwhile looking to that as soon as possible. So, Product launch success is really incumbent on a couple of factors. So we talked about this, right? Top sellers on those really popular terms are going to be really, really hard to unsee. Boring kind of missteps like out of stocks, right? Which can really impact you organically, right? So it, it's those folks that have been there a while, it's really hard to get past them. But right, there's a there's a uh, there's a way to do that, which is advertising. But what can really be a, a kind of bugaboo uh, when you're kind of a new seller, you can think, oh, well, I want to spread my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my dollars in a lot of different places and we'll see what works and then I'll, then I'll capitalize. Really, you want to take an alternative tack. You want to say, okay, can I use, let's say, automatic campaigns to figure out what are keywords where I'm seeing good volume and I'm going to really target those specific keywords, a small basket with my dollars i want to dominate those specific keywords where i know my conversion rates are high based on what i'm seeing uh, from an automatic campaign conversion volume tends to be high and that's where i want to focus i don't want to spread myself too thin that's going to put you at a disadvantage uh, just as cost runs or because costs will rise during q during q4 so those terms are where you want to advertise it's the ones where you're seeing conversion volume you're seeing in, as an automatic campaign you're seeing conversion rates go, go up remain high those are the ones you want to capitalize on so when you're doing a product launch, the key is to kind of when you're like, okay, I'm, I'm getting what I want. You really want to be looking for a few things. First is that you're generating exposure. Your product's getting, uh, getting out there on these high volume terms. You're seeing at least clicks. You're seeing, you know, potentially views, you know, when you're seeing that, that reporting as well, that you're, you're getting what you, you need there. That's like first, first stage, but right, this is all, uh, this should all be done in consort. It's not just one of these things. So if you're just generating exposure, but you're not increasing sales rank, that's a problem, right? You're not really getting at what uh, you know, you're looking to do, which is obviously selling those, you know, have a successful product launch. So you wanna, as you're generating exposure, you wanna see sales rank increase within your, you know, within this product. You wanna see that rising. That's all about driving new traffic, which again, goes back to advertising, right? Are you, are you capitalizing on terms that are gonna make a, a real difference from a volume perspective that's gonna be driving new traffic? So IE, don't, even if you have a stronger brand, you know, branded terms can be part of your strategy, but really focus on these category terms because that's where you're going to find new customers, customers that don't know about your product yet or are unlikely to buy uh, something from you. That's a more, you know, naturally incremental sale generally. And then keyword discovery is kind of underlies all this, right? That how are you getting as keywords develop, uh, you know, in popularity, as 
conversion rate goes up, as conversion volume goes up, how are you then further capitalizing on those terms? If you let those terms just languish in automatic handings, if you're performing well, it's easy to think, oh, I won't touch them because they're doing great. But we find across the board, if you move a term, the same term from an automatic to a manual campaign, conversion rates go up, conversion volume goes up. This, this goes across the board. So it really behooves you to kind of pay attention to that and move those terms in as they appear. You'll be in a better position to capitalize. Okay, so how do you get there? First thing is increasing your ACOS target. You know, during uh, the holiday season, and especially during a product launch too, you, you know, your costs are gonna be higher. You don't have a sales history. You're going up against a lot of different folks. Uh, you need to be willing to kind of cut into that margin a little bit, it, right? In many cases, it might, it might, it's going to, the goal should be to be above your non-end gross margin. Keep an eye on this, though, because this is really where uh, you, know, you have a degree of control. Our uh, software does this. Obviously, there's other options out there where you can kind of say, I'm willing to spend up to this much to get a sale. Uh, and just you know, be willing to, to, to kind of cut into that threshold a little bit than what you might normally do because it is a product launch and because it is the holidays, right? You know you're going to be up against that. Additionally, you want to again maximize your exposure. So you restrict the number of negative keyword actions so that you're kind of you're showing up in more searches, you're just getting that more that data collection so you can better discover what keywords are actually going to be driving volume for you. And you know, again, as you're you know, product launch is about learning. You know, so if you've been, let's say, on Amazon for a while, maybe you have a certain threshold that say I want to hit this before, let's say, I take a keyword from automatic move to manual. You know, during the holidays and during product launch, you might want to lower that threshold a little bit so you can try to capitalize, you know, and you're, uh, you're again, seeing where the positive affect is from the consumer base. Where are they coming and where are they converting? And just be a little bit more experimental there because, again, it's going to be a learning process. There's something that's going to be required of ongoing maintenance. And budget, when it comes to budget. Something that we recommend usually is uncapping budgets if you're seeing a profitable sale or if it's a sale that's within your kind of a profitability range. You don't want to necessarily be hamstrung by, well, especially during like, let's say Black Friday, Cyber Monday as the case may be, well, I'm having an awesome sales day via my ads, but I've run out of budget, you know, halfway through and now I have to pull back or I have to lower my bids. You're leaving that open for a competitor to come in. So but just, you know, again, align that with your, your expected kind of total revenue after, you know, cost, uh, the cost of sale, your net ad sales, so like really align those and just figure out where that budget is. Ideally, uncap it given those guardrails. The guardrails being, I want it at this, you know, this degree of efficiency and uh, you know this margin. So have those guardrails, but but try to uncap if it all possible, especially for product launch. And going beyond that, you can have a great advertising, pro, uh, you know, plan campaign style, but if you're Product page is not terrific, especially if you see your competitors, you're at a disadvantage. So this is a survey uh, that Salsify ran roughly a couple of years ago, uh, and I thought it was really instructive, is people, the number one reason people abandon a product page is because there just wasn't enough details. And this is like newer, this supplanted, this survey had been done a couple of years, uh, this stuff that, that when I was over at Salsify a couple of years ago, I helped conduct this. But we've been done it a couple of years, and it was always price was the number one reason people left the page. Something changed a couple of years ago, where now is about product information. Price is still very important, but when people come to the page, they want to be able to trust it. Trust is a big area, and having good product information instills that trust. Reviews is big, but also just having that consistent, like, wow, these images look good. I know what I'm getting. Uh, that makes a difference, even more than price. People might be willing to spend a little bit more. Obviously, stay in stock. If you go out of stock, your organic rank's going to go down. There's there's big problems there. Uh, obviously, having competitive price because you otherwise you won't win the buy box, and your ad won't show up. Your ad doesn't show up if you don't win the buy box. So make sure your pricing is competitive, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis other other people that might be selling your product with the product launch. This might not be necessarily a problem, but keeping this in mind just generally, um, product imagery and A plus content uh, or enhanced content in the case, as the case may be on Walmart are also very associated the presence of more product imagery and a plus content is associated with better selling product pages across price points across verticals so if you want to kind of put yourself in the company of the product pages that are really selling the most in your category it means having more product imagery likely kind of in at least the five to six plus range in terms of number of images 
and have that A-plus or enhanced content below the fold so those folks that go down there and are looking for more information see something really nice that makes them enticing and makes them want to buy the product. So when it comes back to advertising, I mentioned this before, put your budgets towards keywords that have really good volume. This, this allows like Amazon to say, hey, this product is converting, we're seeing it at high rates, we should rank this higher organically. What you don't want to do is say, well, I see these you know, thousands of keywords that could be relevant. I'm just going to put a little bit of budget towards each of them and, and let them run. You're, you're going to put yourself at disadvantage. You're spreading yourself too thin. You're not showing Amazon that you're driving sales volume, driving conversions that should necessitate a higher organic rank, which will allow you eventually to kind of pull back on advertising a little bit, which should be the goal, right? You push really hard early, but then that, uh, that progress helps you down the line so that you can say, oh, well, now I'm ranking number three, four organically, maybe even higher. I can start to pull back the reins a little bit, be a little more discernible about where I'm placing my dollars. So something to consider before we really hit the core holiday season. You don't have to do this, but a good idea can sometimes be kind of a soft launch in that pre-holiday, early holiday period. What this helps you do is write, okay, where are the keyword targets like that, that are showing promise? And you can also hopefully see your reviews so you've got some validation as you really kind of hit the gas during the holidays. Okay, you have some review base, you know what keywords are working, it allows you to be that much more confident and also appeal that much more to consumers. And what you can do is alongside kind of that many to one campaign structure where you have an automatic campaign feeding into a separate branded competitor category campaigns is you, know, you can utilize Amazon brand analytics uh, to kind of find those keywords that maybe are rising in popularity, you know, test those out obviously alongside your automatic uh, campaign structure. Do you suggest uh, running your same holiday promotions during the soft launch period as well? I would, you know, potentially, uh, you know, it's, it's granted those sometimes do cut into your margin quite significantly. And I would say you want to really reserve those ideally, not necessarily, it may, it may be worth depending on how competitive your, your, uh, your space is looking like. But we're preserving those for really the core holiday season. So even if it's early December, that's really when people are really kicking up. Uh, and obviously, like you know, that, that Black Friday, so the Monday period is the real start of it. So you could start maybe mid-November, late November, early December. But those promotions can be compelling. It's good to have those bullets in the chamber when you're like really trying to hit the gas. So the soft launch can be, again, okay, position yourself, finding what keywords works, advertising, you know, spending that budget. And then maybe you want to save that promotion for kind of the key period and allow them to run. So again, it could depend if your if your space is already super competitive, that may be maybe worthwhile running early. But if it's something where you're like, I know the competition is going to heat up, you know, really in that Black Friday time frame and more, maybe save that for them. Um, so going back to the, the terms, you know, category terms talked about it. Everyone loves co targeting competitor terms, you know, whether it's product I should be targeting, which is a great option. But remember that. What's going to move the needle with Amazon? It's going to be those generic or category level terms because they tend to be higher volume. And also, you're going to have a much better chance of actually winning those placements because Amazon does prioritize right relevance. And if you're a competitor, it's going to cost you that much more versus, let's say, that, that competitor defending their own brand new terms. So just keep in mind, it's nice, it's naturally iterative, but conversion, like, conversion rates are low. So really, just try to focus mostly on, on those category terms, ideally. And you know, I've talked about this, right? You need to let Amazon know your product converts. Investing in those big terms lets them know that, right? It drives that home. And bringing, up, bringing home the fact that uh, it's a more volatile marketplace as it were, during the holiday season. All those terms that you kind of see are, uh, that, that may be very popular in one month, if you go to the next month, right, some of those don't stay the same. And you tend to see bigger drop-offs throughout the year. So just like be aware, this is kind of just illustrative of the fact that if you took a keyword strategy from, hey, I was thinking of launching my product in August, but I got the late three months, I'm going to launch it during the holidays. Don't take the same strategy you're going to do in August and take it to December or November because those keywords will have changed dramatically. You need to stay on top of these things because it's not a static environment. And especially given, you know, COVID and how people are shopping differently, it, it really behooves you to be just much more on top of what's resonating now, what what am I seeing today? What have I seen the last week, last month that leads me to believe this is going to be a popular term and can I invest in it? So staying agile. So during the 2020 holiday season, it's kind of interesting. Peak volume for some categories actually occurred after Cyber Week, after Black Friday, Cyber Monday. That was actually the highest volume peak. 
So keep that in mind. It's not an end-all, be-all. Oh, I didn't hit, didn't have an awesome cyber Monday. Or that's really bad. For some categories, and I'll show you in a minute, that actually happened after cyber. Week. And in some verticals, CPCs vis-a-vis -vis kind of the prior couple week average actually rose less uh, than in 2019 for some verticals. So there wasn't as big a difference. Now maybe CPCs were higher generally, but that big bump into cyber week wasn't as uh, dramatic. And what was really interesting is this just speaks to the fact that more and more people are going on these marketplaces to shop in, in total across verticals. We saw the search volume jump during Cyber Week. Uh, it was outpaced by 2019's increase. However, just the, the baseline volume was higher. So what you should see is that it's like you may be saying, oh, well, my volume jump, I only went up 20% versus, you know, last year was 45%. Well, keep in mind the baseline might have been high. So this, you know, this has multiple implications, but let's let's go to this cyber week issue because I think a lot of sellers can get caught up on this. So we looked at search volume uh, by category and we indexed it to the highest value observed. So you can see it's that 100%, right? Every one of these is gonna hit that 100% at some point saying that's the highest value in terms of search volume that category hit from November 1st all the way to December 22nd. And when you see certain categories like electronics uh, in particular, really like cyber week was like number one right it was the number one for, for like electronics as an example but then look at for example like toys and games and beauty and personal care those were later you know with with uh with toys and games and home and kitchen that that peak actually came kind of an early just in, in kind of a week after cyber week in early december and for you know the case of clothing and, and beauty and personal care that actually came you know towards the middle of december even when actually volume went up high so cyber week's still a big big deal but it's not a make or break. You really can execute against them at really high volume levels even after Cyber Week happens. So just keep that in mind. And you kind of see this dip happens right at the shipping cutoff. So once we say, we can't give you this in two days to get this to you before Christmas, you see those conversion rates go. So this is like uh, where uh, that's really the, the end of it is right when you hit that shipping cutoff and everyone goes down. But before that, there are a lot of opportunities. Okay, so let's talk roadblocks and getting around. So well, let's pass over to David and kind of talk through supply chain. This is obviously a big one. I mean, supply chain is a big one for, for our customers, for sure. And, and we saw this spring and this summer a lot of delays impacting a lot of our customers. Um, and, and I think that, you know, the, the best thing to do for all of this, like what Andrew was talking about and what we talk about all day, every day to our customers is to be proactive. And you know you're you're anticipating a certain level of sales at a certain period in time. In this case, the holidays, right? So you want to make sure that you have all the product that you need in time for for those sales to happen. And like Andrew said, stockouts. That's that's a big concern. We we run into customers who are like, hey, I I need funding so I can produce inventory because if you look at my Amazon pages or my Shopify, like my top sellers, they're all out of stock. And that's a real bummer to be in that position, right? Because you're missing out on e-commerce sales. Um, and, it, and another similar aspect is like, if you get an order from a big buyer and you don't have the time to produce it, then you could potentially miss out on that. So it's good to be stocked up and have everything on hand. And the daunting part of that is always coming up with the cash to pay for it, right? And it's like, you you generally are producing as you have money to pay for your inventory, assuming that everything's going really well on the advertising and the sales side, right? So um, being proactive and finding funding solutions is really the best way to do it. Um, and onboarding a 3PL to make sure that, you know, once that product is in, um, once you've paid for it, the manufacturer's produced it and it's arrived here at port, then it's sent to a warehouse it's going to be able to to fulfill with two-day shipping and, and and like you know when i'm shopping on amazon and i have been so accustomed to getting something in two days that if i see like this product will arrive in a week or some time range in the future i generally just skip over it because there's a lot of other options out there that are maybe just as good um so that's really important and then lead times, particularly right now, and particularly for brands who are growing 
and maybe working with a new manufacturer that is typically dealing with bigger customers, you're not going to be their top priority. So you want to make sure to give yourself a buffer. So if they have a bigger deal ahead of you and that bigger deal gets prioritized, your delay doesn't prevent you from doing what you want to do when you want to do it. Um, and, you know, for the customers that fund with Kickfurther, um, we create custom timelines to take all those factors in and your preparedness and anticipation so that you don't have to issue payments um, until the money's actually coming back in from those sales. So you can put out, you know, quite a bit of capital now, um, produce more than enough inventory that you're going to need over the holiday season, and then paybacks don't start until that inventory starts to sell. And whether that's like right around Cyber Week or a few weeks before, or even like maybe you have something that doesn't sell until mid-December, um, that's all fully customizable so that when your cash flows start coming in, that's when you can pay back uh, on, on the funding that you receive for Kickstarter. Um, yeah, and it's really just important to understand what your options are. Like, we provide a lot of education to our customers, but I think, you know, hearing it from other potential vendors is really important. Um, and there's a lot of different funding sources, and I know we'll get, get to that on another slide and we'll go into more detail on it. Um, but in addition to knowing the right option for the right time, um, understand what the quantity discounts are. And, it, and if you're, you know, buying twice a year versus four times a year, how much can you improve your margins um, and reduce your stress with, you know, the additional shipments um, and overall costs because you're maybe filling a container or you have multiple container discounts or something like that. It's going to, it's going to really improve your margins and your ability to, to profit from, from your sales. Um, and then, it's it's not just about paying for inventory, right? It, inventory is such a high cost, but it's about freeing up that capital for everything else you need to do and everything that Andrew's talking about, targeting the right keywords and you know making sure you, you have fulfillment solutions and paying your employees and making sure your packaging is attractive so when a customer receives the product, you know they're they're impressed with it and they want to send another one to their friend or something like that, right? So there's there's so many different things that go into producing something that a customer is going to be happy with and, you know, refer their buddies to, um, that you want to make sure you have cash for all of those elements, right? And, the, and if your biggest constraint is addressed, then that frees up the cash flow for everything else. Right. So, yeah, I mean, going, going on to that kind of understanding your costs, you know, understand what it's going to take from an advertising perspective. We talked about how, there's kind of a structure to how you want to launch a product really focusing on category keywords, but there's, you know, there's obviously costs associated when you're, and you're dealing with the fact that you're kind of an underdog as it were, being a, being a new product, going up against these, these bigger guys that, that are already ranking and already probably bidding against that keyword as well. So understanding the priors when it comes to advertising costs, uh, you know, whether it's prior holidays, if you targeted this keyword before, you know, that's, that's helpful, but remember, just take it with a grain of salt, because CPC changes from pre-holiday periods, those change dramatically. We saw them shift very significantly from year to year, especially last year, versus 2019. And, you know, just again, COVID made these more unpredictable. So priors are helpful, don't just rely solely on that. And really this means just having the ability to kind of respond to changes as they happen. So if you see more conversions, you see conversion rates going up, that's the time to get more aggressive because you know that keyword is performing. So you may, you want, may want to increase your bid. You're saying, oh, I know this is delivering. I'm going to get more aggressive here because I, I don't want my competitor to come in and now, you know, bid over me and now I'm losing and I have to keep doing that. You want to get more aggressive there and win as many as you can. Uh, that post-cyber week buying period, you have a lot of, you know, we, we just talked about this, right? That, that post-cyber week period can be sometimes even more uh, you know, from a volume perspective, higher than Cyber Week itself, take advantage of that because you're going to have a lot of sellers, a lot of your competitors that will focus on Cyber Week and then be, you know, a little happy to kind of pull back a little bit in that post period. No, if anything, get aggressive because you know there might be less competition there. There's, there's, there's a, that's a great opportunity to really take advantage of that volume. Um, we talked about this before. 
you have your max, you know what your kind of maximum ad cost of sale is, that's what I'm willing to go to. But uncapped budgets, when that can be satisfied, if you know I can get a sale and under that, it's ideal that you can say, I'm willing to get any sale I can if it, if it adheres to those requirements. Uh, and having the capital on hand to do that is very important because that's going to allow you to drive scale and not have to pull back because you hit some arbitrary budget number, uh, even though there are profitable sales out there as the case may be. So uh, that's, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's go into an exercise. This is a more high-level exercise. So this isn't exhaustive, and this is designed to kind of just get your wheels turning, but it's the kind of steps that you should be thinking about as you're thinking about, okay, what's going to be the cost of my advertising for this product launch? So this is uh, from, from earlier this year in terms of the, the top unbranded search term for a given category and the bestseller rank of the last organic product on page one. We right? said so page one is really important. Okay, what's the biggest or the last organic uh, product on page one? And if you use a tool like General Scout provides this, but it's just a tool to kind of say, hey, what's the estimated monthly sales to reach that number in a given product category? So the number of monthly sales needs to do this. So let's focus on, and these obviously vary significantly, but let's focus on office products. Office chair, you'd have to be, uh, the BSR, the, the last product on page one organically was 2087. Estimated monthly sales is 1560 per month. Okay, now Amazon's recommended bid, which again, taken with a grain of salt, dollar fifty. But if you have no sales history, you're going to need to bid well above that to say, hey, I'm really serious. I, I want to win this placement, and I'm going to bid even though you may not understand if I'm entirely relevant. But I'm going to put my book bid up there so that I'm going to rank. And granted, again, you're going to be paying a second price auction. So remember, even if you bid high, you don't necessarily pay that price. You pay that one cent plus whatever the second highest bid was. But during the holidays. Is getting more aggressive so so just be prepared that that recommended bid you need to go well over that uh in order to win consistently but then you need to factor in the conversion rate so across top of cert placements generally this is 25 percent you know give or take uh and what you so that, that makes your expected cost per conversion 12 dollars and right so the estimated cost to reach that sales number per month is eight, a little over eighteen thousand dollars close to nineteen thousand dollars this is again high level, very basic, but it gives you an idea of kind of the things you need to think about as you're kind of setting that budget for this product launch because it's not as simple as, well, I'll just do the recommended bid. I got a few terms, like we're good. You get to be more aggressive, understand the conversion rates, understand what those uh, expected costs are. And remember, that's a, a surge, right? It gets the flywheel moving in your direction. You're seeing that positive feedback loop, but it's not something where I'm just going to turn it on for, let's say, this two week period and then I can turn it off, right? It may take, for that organic ranking to really change, it may take a while. So just be prepared for this that, again, we talked about that maybe soft launch. Maybe you do a soft launch, you kind of start figuring this out. You hit the gas during the holidays. When you have a successful overall holiday, you may not see that, you know, you're going to see some impact in organic rank, but you may not by the end of that be like, okay, now I'm ranking number one for this term, or I'm ranking number five. Like, it's going to take a while. You may be able to slowly pull back, obviously, like post-launch, post-holidays, you can pull back a little bit. But you remember, you're still going to be spending to really make this product a success. Okay, so let's pass it over to David. So now you know the costs associated. So what's kind of the when and how to bring in that additional capital to help you get there if you need it? So there's a number of factors that you know would would indicate that you probably could use some additional capital. Um, introducing new, new product lines, that's certainly one of them. I mean, you're you're bringing in something you're producing something that you haven't produced in the past so you don't have the cash flows from the sales of that product to fund its production um, also you have you know r d costs and setting up new manufacturing that's going to have high costs so um, that's generally a situation where you know you, you might be cash constrained and, and i hear from a lot of business owners that they actually have a new product that they want to launch and they just haven't launched it because they haven't had the capital to do so so while they're still experiencing great success selling their, you know, their bread and butter product line, they could, they could potentially be doubling that or, um, you know, significantly improving it by launching a new product. So always consider that uh, as an opportunity to introduce uh, more capital. And then sales sales are accelerating. Um, basically, like if every time you go out to buy a new product, your bill from your supplier is significantly larger than the last one, then you know, where is that capital coming from? And are you able to afford that? And if if you're not, like, 
what is the consequence? Is the consequence that you're selling less units because you're able to produce less? Well, some people might say, well, I don't want to pay for money because you know, I'd rather keep my margins the way they are. But think about what what is your margin now if you're if you're increasing the number of sales and you reduce the margin on those increased sales, you're still net positive, considerably so, right? So maybe you don't make the same margin on every product, but if you have the ability to sell more product, why wouldn't you pay a little bit for the inventory up front so that you're able to sell that product and not stock out and, and cause people to, to leave you. Um, so I think that that is like, people, people just, they, they associate a cost to fund their business as a negative. I think it's, it's a positive, it's a symptom of growth, right? So it's an opportunity to sell more. Um, and then new distribution channels, like if you add Amazon and you start scaling up your advertising and it just skyrockets, that's, massive and and like wholesale customers you know you, you you finally land that meeting you've been after with target or cbs and they put in a test order and you're like yeah no problem i can pay for this production but what's the next step from that test order right it's going to be like 20x that so that they can put it in you know 100 doors or a thousand doors across the country when you get that meeting that's the time to start figuring out how you're going to pay for the big order not when the big order comes, right? Because you don't want to find yourself in a position where you're scrambling to figure out money and you don't know how you're going to get that money. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk to a lot of people that are being proactive and talking to us before they need money. And they're like, you know what? I know that I can pay for this next order or the next two orders, but I'm willing to actually pay the cost of capital to establish a funding solution. And whether it's Kickfurther or another platform or a bank or whoever else, like, Get those get those solutions in place before you're desperate. Being desperate is not the best way to access capital for sure. And there's a lot of different options out there. You, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're picking the right one at the right time. So um, the, the the sexy thing that everybody's after is venture capital, right? I want I want to get an equity investor who's going to buy a piece of my company and they're a big name and I'm excited and I'm going to talk about it at cocktail parties. But here's the thing, that's really expensive money, especially if you believe the valuation of your company is going to go up. You know, maybe you don't want to dilute your ownership as, mu as much as possible. And we actually have a lot of VCs sending us business because their portfolio companies will come to them and say, hey, you know, I got this big big push for the, for the holidays. And they're like, well, why don't you go access some non-diluted funding? Um, and there's some great options out there. And, you know, if you're selling only wholesale, factoring might be a good solution for you. Um, accounts receivable factoring or AR factoring, some of you may have heard of it, um, is a great solution to bridge the gap between when you deliver product to a wholesale buyer until that product is sold. So you deliver your product, the, the factor will buy the receivables and give you money for, you know, the 30 or 60 day term or whatever. That's a great solution for those types of things. Um, you know, it might be, you might want to access capital earlier than that. And that's when these other solutions can come into play. And that can be like uh, a line of credit or a loan from a bank. I, I'll be the first to say that those are probably going to be your cheapest options. And you should go out and seek those out. Um, unfortunately, a lot of early stage businesses are scrutinized by banks. And, you know, that they, they have a very traditional underwriting that will say that this business is risky for us. Um, and so there's 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 more modern lenders um, like MCAs or um, revenue finance providers, you know, like I'm sure you've all heard of Shopify Capital and Amazon Capital, right? And th th those those are more modern, kind of like kick further um, in identifying risk and saying, yeah, you've only been around for a year, um, but we see some really good results in your sales and we're willing to give you some money. <clears throat> And so, you know, MCAs and online lenders, that's a great solution for an early stage business or, so, or somebody who's stacked a bunch of uh, solutions on top of each other. And, and it's, it's kind of like a, if you can't get it anywhere else, it's a great place to get it, um, but it might be the highest cost. Um, business credit cards, honestly, like, I'm not a big proponent of that. I think that that is a short term non-scalable solution and it can be really high cost and it can actually put your credit at risk and put you in a position where you're 
um, you have a harder time in the future, even if you were able to access that, that more easily um, currently. Um, and then there's inventory financing, which is what we do. Um, you know, I, I think for inventory specifically, it's probably the best solution, particularly for the e-commerce uh, scaling e-commerce brands that we're talking to now, because not only are you doing e-commerce, right? You want to get into wholesale, or maybe you have wholesale business already. So it's it's really uh, an approach that factors in all of your different sales channels and allows you to scale all sides of the business uh, while addressing the costs of all the inventory you need to pay for. Right. So given all that, there's obviously a lot, but let's talk to like bring this into the real world in terms of some real world examples of product launches that, that did great during the holiday season. And then we'll, we'll get to Q&A with the last uh, four or five minutes or so. So first going through here, this is an electronics brand and they were launching new products during the holiday season. And they were doing so alongside a pretty big existing catalog is on walmart.com. But what they did to really make this product a success, they said, okay, we know we have some branded brand affinity you know people sometimes will search for a brand but what we're going to really do is just we're going to take this more exploratory approach we're going to say we're going to really aggressively target search with kind of both automatic campaigns and manual campaigns where we know there's performance and just really focus on exposure we're going to put we're going to try to say okay what's going to give us the biggest volume we're going to put our money there on volume that's what we're going to be focused on and that was the winning strategies okay where the volume was we're going to double down on these newer products and what, what they saw was a 10X in weekly ad drive sales on Walmart during that kind of Black Friday through Cyber Monday period. So it was, it was really great. Obviously we talked about electronics being like, that's the, that's the time. They capitalized that because they were just focused on volume and just doubled down when they knew that was gonna happen by understanding where, where uh, the customers were and just going for it. So that, even though it, you know, it presumably it was expensive, but it made it up for itself you know, in spades when it comes to, in, in terms of increasing total revenue, the revenue from search, the increase in conversions, like that's what they were looking for. They were looking for volume. This made this product a success. So this is a, this is a big one, uh, you know, to, to learn from the show on Walmart, but this is an approach you can take to Amazon as well. John is uh, one of the first customers I worked with when I started to kick further almost four years ago. And I was amazing to see his business grow and scale with him as he grew. I mean, he was just uh, e-com, pretty pretty small business when, when we got started, barely qualified with the minimum threshold. Um, and he did 14 or 15 deals with us over the course of three years. Um, and every time it was bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, he had opportunities to sell more through e-commerce. He had really innovative techniques to attract customers and a really cool uh, marketing approach. You guys should def definitely check him out, um, Beast Products. Um, and then more recently, he started getting some big wholesale deals. And I, his business is well over 10x from when we started with him. Um, and, you know, our from our first deal to our last deal was well over 10x in the, in the amount of money he accessed with us. Um, and so I'm sure John's got some some great other sources of capital at this point, but you can see here um, over the course of our engagement um, that his cost went down, which is another really cool thing about Kick Further. You're, you're earning lower costs um, because you know the, the community funds these deals and as they get to know you, um, you'll be able to offer them less and less and still fund successfully. And, and so, some of these deals, Will actually fund in less than a minute. It's insane. Like just uh, you go to the website to check it out. You can see um, on kickfurther.com uh, all, all the customers and how fast their deals funded. And so, you know, we, we structure these deals and we put them on, on the website and then uh, participants on the plat platform, our, our backers will come to the site and they'll fund the deals and they all go live at the same time. And that's why they, they fund so quickly. So like at, at 3 p.m. Mountain or 5 p.m. Eastern, the, the website will just have tremendous activity every single day. And so some of these deals will be like hundreds of thousands of dollars in less than an hour. Um, so check that out. It's fun as a business owner. It's fun as a participant. And, and it really like, you know, everybody benefits. Right. So just so we have uh, some time for questions, uh, just a quick wrap up here. I think, you know, generally, both of us talked about this. It's about knowing before you go when it comes to launching products during the holiday season. 
And I mean, you know, to, to your point, David, you know, are you approaching that that point where funding is going to be necessary for that new product launch? And I think you talked about it, right? It's understanding what your costs are going to be, particularly from the supplier and fulfillment side, and then on the way down to, to advertising, et cetera. What are these costs? Are you approaching it? You may not be there yet, but you can like, I mean, I think you brought up that, that idea of the wholesaler on the more physical retail front, but it's like, what's your plan? If that's successful, what's your plan to take them to the next level? And, you know, when we talk about from the advertising front, it's also, again, understanding how things are moving on these marketplaces. So what are the best keyword search phrases for your product? And, you know, doing some intelligence on those. For those terms, are there competitors who's beating you out on that search page? Maybe you're not even there yet, right? And especially with newer products, unless you're doing a soft launch, okay, where are you? Who's beating you out? What are they doing? And you can look at this from a paid and unpaid perspective. Who are, who are you up against, really? And when you look at those competitors in particular, as you're kind of getting down to brass tacks, it's okay, if it's pricing, you want to be competitively priced. But we talked about retail readiness when it comes to product page elements. Do you have the imagery, A plus content, et cetera, to make your product listing compelling if people get there? And then write the keyword targeting. Are you targeting the right keywords that are going to drive volume, even if it's a small subset, so that you can put your budget where it's going to make the most difference? And we talked about staying agile. What's your plan to adjust? Things will change. If you take a soft product launch, you can get a lot of learnings, but things are going to change throughout the course of the holiday season. What's the plan to adjust? Now, one thing that, again, at, at Take Metrics, you do is within the software, it helps you kind of just identify automatically, hey, here's a really promising term in an automatic campaign. You should think about moving it to manual. We're not the only game out there, but have that system in place so that you can make those adjustments as you go, as new keywords come up that are promising, uh, so that you can really take advantage as best you can. Okay, so with that, we have a few minutes for questions, so we can uh, we'll, we'll get to a few here. So uh, I think. You know, let's let's uh, David. You, you can go first here, and then there's one for you. So it's, uh, you know, how does kick further funding differ from you know uh, factoring as you mentioned, or revenue finance products like like Clearco or Shopify Capital as you mentioned? Yeah. So I think you know when somebody's looking for funding, there's four really important things that they're looking for. It's how much money can I access? Um, when can I access it? And how much does it cost me? And when do I have to pay it back? Right. Those are the four most important things. And, and how does this this really answer, to answer the question is like AR factoring. When can I access that money? You can access that money when you deliver your product that you've already paid for and produced to your customer. And, and it bridges that gap for the payment term, whether it's 30 or 60 day for the, for the wholesale. Um, uh, Shopify capital. You can access that capital today and use that money for ad spend. But, um, when do I have to pay it back is an important question, right? So with Shopify Capital or ClearCo or any of those revenue finance type products, um, they take basically a percentage of the money that's coming into your bank account and collect that as as you're um, as you're selling. So uh, if you know you want you want to take money to pay a supplier today, tomorrow you're going to start getting charged for that money. Um, and and something that we do a little bit differently is um, you know, for application number one, that money is available when you need to pay your factory. And, and for application number two, um, you don't have to start paying back until you, that inventory is produced, it arrives in your warehouse, it starts selling to customers, and then you start taking in cash flows from those sales. So you get a, a period to breathe and spend on other initiatives like advertising or logistics or whatever else before you, have, you start having to make paybacks. Um, so I, that answers uh those two questions yeah. great and i think we have time for for about one more uh this one's definitely more on the advertising front uh so it's is there any danger associated with being aggressive on your own branded keywords as part of a product launch so this is obviously a big one i think a lot of people uh you know it's easy to focus on your branded terms there is a danger but it's also an opportunity i'd say is that you know we talked about category terms being the biggest drivers of volume, which is absolutely correct. But you need to defend your brand, but you can do this in conjunction with your product launch. So let's say you have some brand affinity, whatever the case may be on the other side. The key is don't advertise your top sellers on your own branded keywords. If someone's gonna come and buy your top seller, it's gonna rank number one regardless organically. You shouldn't have to pay for that sale. What those paid placements should be is an opportunity for you to get that new product 
in front of those potentially loyal customers who already know your brand, right? Use that as an opportunity. Uh, it can be really, really uh, you know, devastating if you're you know, advertising your top seller, let's say in the sponsored brands placement and the top sponsored products placement, and then you got it organically, you're paying for sales that you're likely already gonna get organically. But if you're using those placements to put those new products out there, A, you're gonna be at a bigger advantage to win those placements vis-a-vis -vis your competitors who might be trying to conquest. And again, you're putting those products in front of folks who already know your brand, who might be like, hey, you know what, I'll try that one. Maybe it's a complimentary product, maybe it's a, a, another version, whatever you're launching, that's a great place when it comes to your branding campaign to, to defend with this new product. Just don't go crazy. Understand those are, that's not going to be what's going to take you, uh, you know, make a successful product launch if you're just executing on your branding. Unless you're a huge brand, that's not going to drive the kind of volume you're looking for. You need to do that in addition to focusing on those category terms that are going to drive really, really big volumes. Uh, so I know we're, we're, we're at time now. Um, so with that, uh, we'll wrap up here. Thanks so much uh, for attending. Thank you, David, for uh, getting on here. I think this has been a great session. Uh, and again, you'll get a full replay of, of this webinar along with the slide deck roughly 24 hours from now. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks again for attending. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks so much for having me, Andrew. And thanks to everybody who attended. I, I imagine everybody learned as much as I did, but this was a really, a really great presentation. Thanks, Andrew. Great. See you soon.